So design paradigms are design techniques that underlie many algorithms and we will see a lot of these design paradigms in this course um, including brute force, divide and conquer and dynamic programming. The greedy method where you build a large solution by building um, you know subparts of the solution and at each point you grow this solution uh, using a very greedy method and it turns out that the greedy method is actually um, uh, the right thing to do in several uh, situations and you'll actually good, get good algorithms. There's also decrease and conquer and um, reductions which are other techniques. So of course when we are looking at these design paradigms we, we will look at uh, particular problems to solve and um, so there are many different problem types we'll look at in this course. These are not um, you know disjoint I mean some of them are actually uh, you can classify some problems as you know for example as both combinatorial problems and graph problems right but in general um, we have these uh, different problem types sorting is basically um, taking a sequence of uh, elements and r writing and, and rearranging them so that they uh, are in ascending order. Searching is you're given a set of uh, numbers let's say or a set of data and you're trying to search for one element in the um, in this um, in this in this data. Um, string processing is um, another important application um, where Th these algorithms are, these problems are really about uh, finding uh, matches of patterns and strings and uh, for example in uh, biology uh, applications these are now very useful because you can think of um, DNA sequences as um, uh, sequences of C, G, A and T and then you uh, people are interested in finding patterns uh, in this uh, sequence which might um, indicate that there is some disease uh, or something like that. Um, there are also a class of problems called graph problems that we'll study. Basically uh, many problems in computer science can be modeled as a, as a graph problem. A graph is um, uh, a set of vertices with edges connecting them. Perhaps there's a direction to these edges as well and um, we'll, we can look at several graph problems. One interesting graph problem um, w is the traveling salesperson problem which is that these nodes indicate cities and you would like a, a, a traveling salesperson wants to uh, visit all the cities and there are edges which uh, could define the cost or distances between cities right and uh, you would like to um, see if um, give this salesperson a particular path which minimizes the cost of traversing through all cities. Um, there are also a class of problems which are generally called combinatorial problems. Here you're asking for a combinatorial object which usually requires um, you to enumerate um, subsets or um, um, or a combination of elements in a set right and uh, these problems are, um, are are ubiquitous for example if I wanted to um, have a graph I have a graph and I wanted to know whether I can assign some set of colors to this graph right such that um, if I take any edge the the nodes on the opposite um, edge uh, opposite sides of this edge uh, have a different color and I could ask what is the minimum number of colors using which I can color a graph and uh, this is actually a combinatorial problem um, uh, which is well known. There are also a bunch of geometric problems that are interesting so, so these involve um, uh, problems about points and lines in some space for example if I gave you um, a set of points in two-dimensional space and asked you what is the smallest convex hull um, uh, containing this set of uh, points then that is a very uh, interesting problem in geometry right and for, for example in v visual applications you might be looking at a picture right and you might uh, decide that there are certain points in your picture and you might want to find the convex hull in order to figure out what shape it, the, the object defines and this can be very useful in, in graphics and vision. Right? And then we have a bunch of problems in nu called numerical problems which are especially for simulating continuous behavior 
for um, let's say simulating uh, physics or simulating the real world so if you wanted to build a way to predict weather you might use a very large simulation system involving differential equations and so on right and these are usually solved numerically and uh, these numerical problems are of course very important for example you could ask uh, how a protein folds or how um, you know some protein replicates or how the weather will behave using such simulations so now let's turn to where algorithms fit into the general software engineering picture so um, when you go into the real world and work on in a in a, in a place um, where you're doing software engineering you'll realize that a large software system is actually made up of a lot of components I mean um, so there, there'll be networking in the in the system there will be libraries that uses uh, there will be a web component there will be a database component uh, for storing um, the files in some way so that you can access them easily there'll be a user interface and so on but typically um, many of these software systems uh, have a core set of algorithms that uh, run the whole system okay and let me give you two examples suppose you take web search uh, if you go to um, Google or Bing and you do a web search the whole software system that's uh, that's there is pretty complex but if you look at deep inside there's a key algorithm which indexes uh, all the compu all the web pages on the internet uh, it indexes in a certain way so that when you search for a keyword it can search very fast and also a ranking system which can rank which are the best results very fast and that's the core algorithm in a web search um, routine um, for, uh, the, uh, take another example is this this mech system uh, that you're looking at right this video for example that you're looking at this video and uh, around it there is a lot of uh, user interface you know there are buttons you can click and there's a cloud uh, platform where it's hosted and so on but if you look at the video itself the key algorithm is an mp4 compression algorithm that makes sure that you can view these videos in uh, using very little uh, bandwidth and um, at, at reasonable speed um, there's, a, there's a lot of algorithms that go into compressing the video because a lot of the parts of the screen do not change you can utilize it to compress it and actually um, build very good algorithms um, for video render rendering so to conclude <coughs> um, this course which is on algorithm design and an analysis is really a course on how to think computationally it in, in some sense forms the core of computational thinking right and this is something we hope to rewire your brain right so that your brain can now really think uh, in terms of computing um, and and this will be useful for your entire career as a computer engineer